up, everybody? How y'all doing? Once again, it's your favorite time of the week. Uh, you are watching the Alphabets football talk uh, football show, and I'm your host, Marcus the Alphabets. And as usual, uh, I got my my right hand lady with me, the first lady of, of Rise Up. I got uh, Ramona Diehard Die in the house. Hey, What's going on, Ramona? how you doing? Oh, pretty good, pretty good. How are you? We, I, I didn't think we'd make it here. You know what I mean? We didn't survive. We didn't survive the pandemic. We didn't survive uh, economy breakdown. We didn't survive the murder hornets. No uh, training camps. No no OTAs. No nothing. And here we are, football season, week one. You ready? I am. I am. All right. Let's. All right. Let's do this. Everybody, please like and share. Uh, make sure you, you tag everybody, uh, throw some likes and shares up in there. Uh, uh, once again, like I said, you're watching the Alphabet's football talk show on uh, with the Rise Up family and the On Point Network. Let's go. Let's do these news and notes. Let's go. So first, you know, there was a lot of there was a lot, a lot of last minute uh, people getting paid. Teams shuffling around some money. Uh, trying to get players paid that we knew that would get paid. And first and foremost was Jalen Ramsey. Uh, contract five years, $105 million. And that moves him up to, I did say he was going to be the highest paid cornerback in the league whenever he got paid, right? I, I did say that, right? Yes, you sure did. I remember uh, that well. I, it was, you know, they, they got their guy. Uh, he's a uh, shut down corner and he just got his money after Trey white. Uh, I think it was a week or two, week or two ago, Trey white got paid. So these guys are going to be linked. They're going to be linked together. And I think Stefan Gilmore just signed a one year extension with his contract. So they're all trying to keep these guys around in the same part. Uh, there were some people speculating that he might not, you know, that he might not get, get his money. Look, they gave up three, two or three first round picks for him from Jacksonville. He was always going to get paid. I told everybody he's going to get paid. This guy's got to get paid. Now, I don't know how the hell else they're going <laughs> to pay everybody else, but you got your quarterback paid. You got your, you got your uh, generational uh, pass rusher, defensive tackle and, um, and uh, Aaron Donald paid, and now you got this guy paid. So, you know, well-deserved. Uh, he got his way. He got out of Jacksonville, got to a contender. And, you know, I wish the man luck, you know. I, look, a lot of people are – how do you feel How do you feel about um, How you feel about Ramsey getting this money? Is he, is he worth it? Oh, I think he absolutely is worth it, man. I really do. Um, I, you know – he was, we all knew how unhappy he was in Jacksonville. We knew he wasn't going to be there for long. Um, I, I think he is, absolutely. Uh, so, I, you know, he, he got it, you know. So, I think right now what you have is Ramsey, Trey White, and then I think you got Darius Slay at three. And then I think you got Gilmore. So, the, I mean that's about that sounds about right. You got your top four, however you rate them. You know, I got I I got them all in there around the same. You know, around the same. So we'll see. You know, job well done. And then fought uh, one of your guys over there with Pittsburgh. Uh, he got paid too. I feel like I feel like this is an Oprah Winfrey show. You get a new contract. You get a new contract. You get a new contract. Cam uh, Cam Hayward. Uh, star uh, defensive lineman for the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. He uh, he got he got a new contract, four years, 70, 71.4 mil. Uh, def, uh, disruptive, you know, to go along with with that stout. You know, Pittsburgh loves defense. They love their defensive players. You know, you got T.J. Watt and Bud Dupree and. This guy, and you got Minka. Minka probably when he comes up on his contract, he'll probably be the highest paid safety. You know, in the him, it, it'll it'll be between him and probably Jamal Adams. So you know, well done. He was deserving. Like to see that. 
My, my, uh, my only issue with them paying him like they have, and don't get me wrong, he's the anchor, but I think that this this contract signs the end of Bud Dupree next year. I don't think he'll be there. Yeah, he's on the he's on the franchise tag, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah you probably. I mean, look, you're in a you're we're in a salary cap league. And as much as you wanna, as much as you wanna try to keep everybody, it's just not possible, you know. Yeah. So another guy we got here. This guy's been looking for a home for a minute. There was speculation he was going to going back to Seattle. There was speculation uh, maybe the Patriots would scoop him up. There was speculation that the Saints were working out something for a signing trade for him. But uh, um, Clowney finally got signed. I think this is a great move for them for their defense. Um, one year, one year, fifteen million. Uh, of a uh, far away from what he wanted, he was originally asking for twenty million dollars, uh, but he he got his money. Yep. Um, so this is a proven year for him. The guy's never had double digit sacks. I think he's an awesome player, but for what he's wanting, I just feel like he doesn't get the sacks. And I mean, there's more there's more than playing defense and just getting sacks, but for his position. That's what you're judged off of. If you're an edge rusher, you're a defensive end, you're a 3-4 outside linebacker, you're judged off of pressures and sacks. And he's never had double-digit sacks. But this is a year, you know, he's on a contender with Tennessee. Uh, he was on a contender with Seattle last year. He was on a contender with with um, with um with the Texans. So he's been on good teams. It's never like been like he's he's been on bad teams, but – uh, best of luck to him. You know, hopefully he's able to shine and cash that into a big uh, contract next year. And last but not least, the man, Deshaun Watson, now officially the second highest paid uh, quarterback in the league, uh, falling in just behind Patrick Mahomes' 10 years, 10 year. Five hundred million dollars, four ten year, four hundred and fifty million, something like that. Half a billion, half a billion, half a billion dollars. Uh, the shot, the is at uh, four years, one sixty. So that gives the Texans some flexibility. Uh, generally, the players want less years. Uh, they usually want those four years contract because you got the TV contracts coming up, and you know with this COVID thing, a lot of the players' earning potential goes down. So. I think that's a good deal for him. You're looking at around 39 million. And I think this sets up, you know, everything's falling into line. These next this next group of quarterbacks get paid. You got you got Deshaun Watson, um, you got Patrick Mahomes paid, you got Deshaun Watson paid. Next, you, and you know who the next two guys are. That's Lamar Jackson and Dak Prescott. Those will be the next two guys. So now, you know. If that goes out there, you're looking at probably around $38 million, $38, $39 million. I think he'll get a contract comparable to Deshaun Watson. So congratulations to him on getting paid, but not congratulations on what happened last night. Uh, yeah. we, had, we had our first game of the season. Very excited. Uh, I was <sighs> – it was, it was hard to watch. It was really kind of hard to watch, and I to watch um, to watch him struggle. Watch to watch. Look, um, for most of the game, Deshaun Watson he did, he was he was under constant fire. Uh, Kansas City's defense looked really good. You know, Tyron Matthew was a hell of a pickup. You know, Chris Jones did his thing. I mean, they got a really good team over there, and their offense is just incredible. Their offense, if they have the the they have the potential, and and Ramon, I know you've watched a lot of football like like I have. I think the Kansas City offense has a chance to be special. They already are special, but I think they have a chance to be all time great. When you look at the weapons that they have, when you look at you know, the skill position players that they have. And Patrick Mahomes, 
Patrick Mahomes is the real deal. And that's why Kansas City had no problem paying him. They had absolutely no problem play, uh, paying him. Uh, they looked in midseason form. They're really hard to defend because you have speed everywhere. You know, you got Tyreek Hill. Kelsey will kill you. Miko Hartman will kill you. Uh, Demarcus Robinson will kill you. Uh, Pringle will kill you. All of these guys they got. And then they get another weapon. They get another weapon in this kid, Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Uh, last pick of the first round. And he he comes out, you know, uh, Damian Williams, he opts out. He opts out of his contract for the year. And you get, you know, you get this kid, Clyde Edwards Hilaire out of uh, LSU. And this kid just, he he showed up last night. He really showed up last night. So yep. uh, he, scored, he scored a touchdown too last night, didn't he? 20, 25 carries for 138 yards. 25 carries for 138 yards. He didn't catch any, he didn't catch, he didn't catch a ball last night. And we've seen, we saw him at LSU. We saw him catch the ball as well. He can catch the ball. They just didn't need him to last night. So they got all of these weapons. Uh, um, Patrick Mahomes is deadly accurate. He had a, he had a pedestrian night, uh, 24, 32 for 211 yards, but three touchdowns, very efficient. Didn't throw the ball a lot. You know, uh, three touchdowns, three touchdown passes, barely touched throughout the game. You know, it's just they're in midseason form. Uh, Kelsey had a good game, and I just, you know, I what did what did you see from the game, Ramona? Anything catch your eye with that game? Uh, how bad the Texans' O line looked. They're all yeah. Uh, but I wasn't very impressed with their defense either. I, I was actually I, I wasn't expecting what I what I saw um, in, in that game last night, and it, it was really hard to watch. Uh, but usually, usually, you will have one team who does real well starting the next season. As you know, after a Super Bowl win, sometimes you'll have a little let off. But you didn't see that last night, or did we? We don't know because we don't we don't know how to gauge what we saw from the Texans and and I was just really disappointed in in the the first game. It was almost as bad as my Steelers last year playing against the Patriots. I mean, you know, I I, I won't ever forget that first game. I just won't, you know. So I was really disappointed. Um, I think that getting rid of key players has killed the Texans. And, you know, we'll be bringing up a, a, a subject under the levels later on in the show that we're going to be discussing coaches that, you know, heads might be on the plate, so to speak. And I think that one could very well be one of them to go. So. I, I I think the main thing that was shown last night was that these teams that decide to do a wide receiver by committee, it, it just doesn't it, look there. Have there been teams that didn't have a star wide receiver? Yes. But generally those, t those teams that do really well, they have a, a guy whenever Things get rough that they can they can take that takes over the game. You know, you look at you know you look at the Calvin Johnsons and the Antonio Browns and the the you know uh, Randy Mosses and the the Tos and the Jerry Rices, the DeAndre Hopkins. When you look at those number one receiver type guys, it, it helps because you have a guy you have a guy that you can rely on. When things get tough, you can just throw the ball up to him. Hey, go make a play. And I think Deshaun Watson is going to really miss Hopkins this year. I really do. I mean, it was very evident last night. He was looking around. Will Fuller's always hurt. Uh, Kenny Stills, he didn't do crap last night. Randall Cobb, I think he had like two catches for like maybe 15 yards. Uh, Kiki Cutie, he didn't show up. Um, it was like... 
he missed DeAndre Hopkins last night. And I don't know if they got something lined up. You know, you hear teams talk about running back by committee. It's hard when you got a bunch of twos and threes out there. Right. Instead of a number one. When you got a bunch of guys and, you know, you you look and, and they're good wide receivers. I'm not saying that – I'm not saying Will Fuller's a bum. I'm not saying that Randall Cobb's a bum. But they're not DeAndre Hopkins. You know, DeAndre Hopkins, in my opinion, is the best wide receiver in the league, and you gave him away for nothing. Nothing. You, you uh, tried. Uh -huh. I'm sitting here reading some of the, the comments, and Tito makes a point, though. New England, for the last few years, didn't have a number one wide receiver. No, they didn't have a number one at wide receiver, but guess what they did have a number one at? <laughs> a tight end. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what, look, a number one isn't always – People people get it confused that it's got to be a, a wide receiver. A number one is a guy who you just – he's your mismatch guy that you look at you look to. Back in the day uh, when Tony Gonzalez was playing with the Chiefs, he was their number one. He was their, he was their number one. He, he, for many years, it was like this is the guy here that we've got to stop because Tony Gonzalez will single uh, – back in the day uh, – 10, 10, 15 years ago, Jimmy Graham was a, was the Saints' number one. I mean, they had Marcus Colston, but Jimmy Graham was their number one. So, I, uh, uh, Marcus, I need you to check your, your the chat messages. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, um, I'm sorry here. I'm I'm sorry here. Uh, so okay. yeah. So I don't think that you, you know, the the offensive line is terrible. The offensive line is terrible, and then the the um, you know the they have no receivers. They have absolutely like no receivers. Um, I I uh, I hope that they I hope that they are able to go and get somebody. I mean, I don't know who would be out there. Um, to me, they need a big a big body receiver. Um, they need a big body receiver that can kind of like go out there and and. Um, you know, kind of take over games there. I think he's truly going to be missed. So um, moving on to the next game, um, I, I wish th it's the best of luck. I would wish the best of luck to the Texans. You know, it's one game. It's week one. Um, I don't I don't think that they're going to be terrible, but, you know, you definitely it's hard to replace a guy like DeAndre Hopkins. It's definitely hard to replace a guy like that. So. Are you there? So um, when you look at um, – I'm going to read some of the comments here. I'm going to go ahead and read some of these comments here, and uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Eddie V. Uh, Mookie Hawkins, he broke the bank. <laughs> Eddie V. Hill, do you blame someone for wanting out of Jacksonville? Uh, no. No. Um, no, no, I don't. Uh, Dalton Smith, remember Clowney is re reuniting with Mike Grable. That's definitely a positive. Uh, Ethan Tweedy, you're right. That is what Dabble Sweeney called uh, DeAndre uh, Deshaun Watson called him Michael Jackson and cleats. Definitely, he's a look. He was having a terrible. He still uh, for for all my fantasy football players out there, he he still had 21, 22 points. So he. He was able to. I actually played him in one of my leagues last night, and I he he came back towards the end. I told everybody, go, hey, garbage time points are still fantasy football points. I'll take them. So he he did it. Welcome to the show, Tito. Um, shout out to Ethan Tweedy for <laughs> Derek Johnson, uh, David Johnson, uh, Dalton Smith. Watson was missing Hopkins with, with no doubt. Um, Dalton says, I'm surprised I didn't fall asleep during the game last night. Uh, and then uh, Tito says, uh, New England for, for the last few years didn't have the number one wide receiver. Can a person with no elbows do push-ups? Okay, I don't know where that's coming from. So uh, any any other thoughts from the game last night before we move on to this game for the games this week? Well, honestly, not really. Um I, I just was really disappointed. I'm sure a lot of people probably were, were disappointed um, in the in the 
actual game itself, the meat of it. I think we all kind of picked Kansas City to win. And I, I noticed there were a few people in the pick em leagues who took the Texans on that off chance, you know. And, and I, I, I understood that, too, because I've seen, you know, we've all seen that happen. But, yeah, I, I – um, It was, I, it, I'm looking it, forward it, to Sunday. <laughs> yeah, it, it it was it was ugly. It was it was really ugly last night. But um, so we're gonna move on to the uh, we're gonna move on to the um, we're gonna move on to the the games this week. Let's go. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go through these games here, and we're gonna pick we're gonna pick these winners. Winner winner chicken dinner and first first game up NFC East. Battle between the WFT. I really have to watch myself before I say that. The WFT, the Washington football team, versus the Philly Eagles. Shout out to my man Dennis Holmes, uh, the ignorant thinker. Uh, as usual, uh, I think you can look forward to some Smash Mouth football. I'm actually looking forward to see what. Um, Dwayne Haskins does. Uh, he was named the starter. I, I, I was surprised with that. I thought maybe Alex Smith would win that job or the kid that they picked up from uh, Greer. I think that was his name. Greer from Ron Rivera brought him over from Carolina. But Haskins, first round pick last year, they decided to roll with him. Uh, they've made a lot of changes, got rid of uh, Darius Geist, just got rid of him, got rid of Adrian Peterson. I was, I was surprised with that. A lot of people – Thought you know he would continue on with that. Uh, seems like they're very comfortable going forward with uh, Antonio Gibson, a highly touted rookie, and um, so we'll see. Uh, on the on the Philly side, they still don't have any wide receivers. They weren't able to get a deal done with with Zach Ertz, and I, I think that that I think that's very telling. I don't think Ertz. I would not be surprised if Ertz wasn't there by the end of the year. I think they they would be totally comfortable moving forward with Dallas Goddard. Uh, their 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 young stud, stud running back Miles Sanders he's questionable for the game. Their first round pick Jalen Rager, uh, he's questionable for the game. Alston Jeffrey's not going to play. Uh, so they're back to they're back to it again with uh, a lot of their top notch pass catching options being hurt. And I'm going to pick the Washington football team in this game. I'm going to go against Philly. Uh, and I know Dennis is probably going to call me a hater. He's going <laughs> to probably call me. He's, you're just hating. You're just hating on my Eagles because you're a Cowboys fan. And I just know. I just, look, I'm going to make a prediction. If I'm wrong, I'll come back on here next week and I'll be like, hey, I was wrong. I think Washington's defensive line is going to have Carson Wentz running for his life. I think that they're going to unleash Montez Sweat. I think they're going to unleash the kid, the, the number two pick in the draft, uh, Chase Young, got Ohio State, and I think they're going to get after Carson Wentz. So I got I got Washington winning this football game. I think Ron Rivera is going to put a good game plan together, and I think they're going to get after Carson Wentz. I think you know, uh, I and it's now if. If Philly was fully healthy, I would I would probably lean with Philly, but I'm going to go with Washington in there. Isn't isn't uh, Geis out though? Geis is they cut him. Yeah, I I, I thought they I, I thought he was out. That's what yeah, I they thinking. cut him. They cut him and they cut Adrian Peterson. The two guys that they thought were going to be their their number ones, uh, they they cut them. So that's right. what I'm looking at. I'm I'm looking at. But I, I think Washington on defense, I think they have enough on defense to give Philly problems. Philly's got a bunch of problems on their offensive line. Their left tackle got hurt. They had to go and pick uh, uh, Jason Peters back up, bring him out of retirement. And I just think that Washington defensive line is going to give them fits. No, no Miles Sanders is looking like their star running back. So I'm, I'm going to go with Washington on here. Well, I hate to say it, but I actually took Washington only because I think that Hassan, to me, I felt like they just kind of threw him, this kid out of the, under the bus last year. Um, and I think he, for 
for what he had to play with and as far as what all was going on with Washington last year with all the turmoil, I don't think he did that bad of a job, really. Uh, and I, I actually believe in Haskins. I, I, I liked him in college. I think that I don't, I don't think that it's going to be two, three games and he's out and Crabtree's back in. I really don't. And I think that uh, the coaching staff see the same thing that I'm seeing. So I just don't know if Crabtree's going to be able to come back and be, be fully a, a quarterback that's going to be able to stay healthy. Uh, but I guess we'll see. I actually took Washington uh, in my in the Pick'em League as well because right. I, I feel the same thing. I think that Washington's defense is, you know, going to cause Carson Wentz some problems. You know, the old the old joke: uh, Carson Wentz uh, hurts. <laughs> I think right. Hurts is going to be in there a lot sooner than what people think. I really do. I'm to, I'm totally with it. I'm I'm uh I, I'm going against it, and if I'm wrong, I mean I'll take it. I just that's the way I see that. So, moving on to our next game. Uh, wow, what 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 a lot has changed this off season. Uh, gone are the days. The eleven. The eleven. The 11 time AFC East champion, 11 in a row, AFC East champion, uh, New England Patriots. They they did a massive overhaul, had a lot of people, uh, had a lot of people leave, uh, uh, opting out for the COVID. A lot of guys in their defense lost a lot of guys on defense. Jamie Collins, uh, Patrick Chung opted out, uh, Courtney Upshaw. Uh, the, one of the Alabama boys, he opted out. Courtney up, so I think that uh, I think that's who. No, Hightower. I'm sorry, Dante Hightower. He opted out. So, uh, you know, um, hey, uh, <laughs> they go and pick up Cam. They go and pick up Cam Newton. You know, they pick him up, uh, make him a team captain. Made him a team captain. Very surprising there. Uh, and then you look at the Dolphins. They have made a lot of a lot of moves, spent a lot of money. Byron Jones, Xavier Howard, a couple of players from uh, the, the Bills they picked up. Uh, um, I think they picked up – I think it was Jordan Phillips. I forget which one of them, or, or Lawson. But they, they, they have totally revamped their defense, uh, picked up Jordan Howard at running back, picked up Matt Breida. Uh, you know, drafted drafted Tua, even though he's not starting this week. It's looking like they're going to roll with Ryan Fitzpatrick. <sighs> and, and honestly, you know what? Fitzpatrick, he gets no love. <laughs> this guy who has been probably on almost every team in the NFL, I'm just you know, joking. But still, I mean, he has. Yeah, this guy yeah. has you know, you, you know, there's a word for that, and I can't use it on 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 this uh, show. But he's been around the NFL, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. Um, I I just think that some of the moves they've made were questionable for the last year or so, and I think Tua is very well going to be their future. Oh, no doubt. They picked the out. No doubt. Yeah, they got rid of Rosen. Uh, I'm not even sure where he went to, but he, he went to Tampa Bay. He he went. He's on Tampa Bay's practice squad. So basically, he's going to back up Tom Brady. Yeah, he's going to get he's going to get mentored by Tom Brady. Yeah, basically, which and, I think is a good situation for him. You sit oh, back, and you got Bruce Arians as a head coach. Yes. I mean, you know, and, and he's a quarterback friendly coach. We all know that. Um I I, I just I I I am pretty certain I took the Patriots to win in the Pickums. But I, it was a really hard pull for me to do. Um because I'm not so on Cam Newton. I, I've got to see this guy in his first game. I, that, I think that's why I went ahead and took the Patriots 
but I've really been leaning about going in and changing that pick and going with Miami. Um, I, I just, like I said, I, I, and, and it's in Miami and Miami always beats the Patriots usually one game out of the season. Well, they, you know, they beat, they beat them the last game of the season last year when the Patriots could have been the number one seed. I mean, it, it, it's not like the Patriots were sitting their players. They were out there playing for a top seed and the Dolphins beat them. And Patrick, uh, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick played his ass off. So it's not, you know, it, it always seems that Miami plays them very hard. Uh, I think it's going to be a hell of a game. I, I think uh, Bruce, uh, I, I think Bill Belichick is really hell bent to show that he can win without Brady. Um, I think you and see we a, know Brady. We know for a fact Brady is hell bent on proving that he can win without anyway. without Belichick. Yeah. Exactly. So it's you know all of these people out here that were all the. The Patriots are tanking for Trevor. No, that's not the Patriots. That's the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jacksonville Jaguars are the ones down there having a fire sale down there, giving away everybody. They're the ones that's trying to to get Trevor uh, Trevor Lawrence. I think I think you're going to see the Patriots come out. I think they're going to utilize uh, Cam's mobility. I think they're going to uh, utilize his legs. You know, run some some read option stuff. Uh, run, you know, some RPOs where he can get out in space. And, and I look, I'm going to give y'all a name, and I know everybody's going to laugh and, and doubt me on this. Nikhil Harry, Nikhil Harry, watch that. Watch that. Uh, he was very highly touted, touted last year, and um, so we'll see. Don't don't sleep on him. So, moving on to the next game, we got a oh, oh. uh. In- who are you picking in that game? You didn't say. Uh, see, I was trying to get out of there. You caught me, Ramona. I caught you. Like, yeah, no, no. Um, I'm still gonna roll. I'm still gonna roll with the uh, the Patriots, though. I just until I see until and Bill, I trust. I just I believe in Bill Belichick. I think they find some way to to win. I think you see a lot of James White coming out of the backfield, and I think you see you see them. Uh, really established Nikhil Harry. I really believe that. I think this kid's going to be good. So Is it in Foxborough? I, I could have swore the game was in Miami. Yeah, Ramon, uh, Ethan said it's in Ethan said it's in uh, uh, Ethan says it and it's true. <laughs> so. yeah, Ethan said it's, it's in Foxborough. So I don't okay. Well, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go ahead and leave my pick with the Patriots then. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't bet against the I don't get. I don't bet against the the Patriots at home. So, Ramona, yes, we no. have we have uh, we have another surprise. I think I think we'll go ahead and do that right now. So, as you all know, uh, myself and and my co host over here, we've been and uh, Andre Andre Robinson. We we came up with uh, an idea to um, get rise up and do some things out there. For rise up and get us in the community and you know we've been doing the rise up custom football cleats uh as you know we we've we're this is our fourth pair uh um, make sure you all are going to the make sure y'all are going to the um the the rise up family group and if you want tickets okay these t- these tickets we're gonna you're, you're gonna keep seeing the you're gonna keep seeing new she- shoes be put up there. Shout out to my boy uh, Ruben Lindley from uh, Ruben's Customs, and uh, we have a new pair for y'all. These are we got some sound. We got some sound up in there. Some sound. Yeah. Yeah. We got no sound up in there. That's some nice heavy metal. So uh, we got a new pair for you. Uh, as you know, we already have the. Um, we already have the. We started off with the Buffalo Bills. Uh, all all my Buffalo Bills people out there. Uh, if you want those cleats? Uh, go get your tickets. They're five. Uh, one one ticket for five bucks. Uh, one more time. Hang on. Let's one more time. Check it out. I love the the Julio photo. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. So you all can see. On top of those shoes. Yeah. So as y'all can see there, we got the uh, that's our that's our new ones, and uh, throughout this show we'll be showing uh, we'll be showing uh, the other cleats. This is our fourth pair. Uh, we got bills. I'm gonna go ahead and play the. I'm gonna go ahead and play the bills. Let's, okay, let's see the bills then. Let's see the bills. Uh, these are the ones right here. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be having a raffle. Make sure uh, we'll be announcing the winner on these. So make sure that you're tuning in to all of the uh, Rise Up family shows uh, to see how you can get these. Go to the Rise Up the Rise Up page. Uh, these are custom cleats. I mean, they're they're awesome. I mean, uh, our guy Ruben Lindley, uh, he does a phenomenal job uh, customizing these cleats. Uh, you know, you get them, you know, you spend a couple of, but you know, spend 10, 20 bucks, you know, you're getting a hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty dollar pair of cleats. Uh, so make sure you, you know, the more tickets you get, you know, the, the more tickets you get, more opportunity you get to win. So uh, make sure y'all are make sure y'all are going up in there. Uh before we before we go off of the air, we'll make sure that we get you the link. Uh the we'll get you the link where you can get those. So Look out for it. And when you go onto the page, um, these these uh, Falcon shoes will be in there. So you'll get an opportunity. If you want to buy tickets for those, you can get those. Uh, we're going to have the, we're going to announce, uh, we're going to go Bills, Eagles, uh, Steelers. And we'll show the Steelers. Uh, we showed those, we introduced those last week. We're going to show the, the app for that, those again. So be on the lookout for those and get those tickets and you, and you get an opportunity, you know. Uh, we'll have them shipped to you, priority mail, when you, you know, whoever wins and you can show it off and, hey, they're your shoes, you know. So they, they're pretty high tech, hand, you know, hand painted, customized. You're talking about really nice, you know, this, something display, you know, put up in your man cave or or maybe a good Christmas gift or something like that. So make sure y'all are getting those tickets. OK, so uh, let's do it. So moving along, we'll, we'll show those uh, Steelers cleats uh, a little bit later, but you saw you saw those two there. So moving on to our next game, we got an NFC North battle. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, Green Bay Packers versus Kirk Cousins, uh, the, the Packer, uh Vikings. And R Ramon, I'm going to let you go first on this one. How do you see this going? What, what are your thoughts on this game? I'm going to let you go first on this one. I'm, where's this game at? Uh, it's, it's, in, it's in Wisconsin. Okay, it's in Green Bay? Yes. Okay. Aaron Rodgers all the way. Listen, this guy doesn't get, he could, he, oh, he's a serviceable quarterback, right? Let me tell I'll you something. This, this guy forget. took that team 13 and 3 last year. Uh, he is twice the quarterback. Twice. As the Viking. Uh, I, I, Kirk Cousins. Cousins, thank you. I was sitting here trying to think of Rosen, but I was like, no, I know it's not it. It's, yeah. Anyway, no, he's twice the quarterback as, as Rosen, in my opinion. Um, I'm taking the Packers. I, I think I'm taking the Packers, and I think that the moves that the Vikings made um, I, I think that that's going to do nothing but help Buffalo with Stefan Diggs, and him getting rid of him is going to really hurt the Vikings' offense. So, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm taking the Packers all the way. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to agree with you there, Mona. Uh, I think Aaron Rodgers is on a mission, but I'm going to tell you something. I think this is Aaron Rodgers' last year in Green Bay. I really do believe this is his last year there. Um, I think that. I think that. Um, you know, I, I didn't like the fact they didn't go get another receiver. I was a little upset about that, but I, I I'm down with Aaron Jones. I met Aaron Jones. I, I really like him. I like the kid uh, AJ Dillon that they picked up. Um, and Devonte Adams, I think he's one of the premier wide receivers in the league. And I just, I, I'm with you. I trust Aaron Rodgers more. I do like uh, the Vikings picking up Yannick from Jacksonville. 
And I like them drafting the kid, Justin Jefferson, but I just don't think that I, I, I just trust Aaron Rodgers more than I do Kirk Cousins. And I trust, you know, I just, I thought, I think he finds a way to get it done. And let's not forget Green Bay's defense wasn't that bad last year. They really weren't that bad. They had the, the, the Smith boys, Zadarius Smith and Preston Smith. And I mean, they played lights out last year. They got well, two. Good. You, you know, and, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but Jordan Love, we, they did. They did Aaron Rodgers the same way they did Brett Favre. They didn't get him no help. They didn't get Aaron Rodgers a receiver to to, to throw the ball to, uh, even a future receiver. And there were some decent receivers in this draft. Oh no doubt. Uh, they didn't get a receiver for Aaron Rodgers, which spoke momentum to the idea that Rodgers is gone. You know, I I think this is his last season in, in yeah. Green Bay. I yeah. think that Jordan Love is the future of that team. But I really was shocked that they didn't at least try and get a receiver after they got Jordan Love. You yeah, know? I mean there was there there was a lot of there was a lot of receipt there was a lot of receivers out there that that were available, you know. I mean, I'm like you made no effort to go, and it didn't even have to be a number one wide receiver. Get him another, get him a nice number two on the other side. I I thought maybe a guy like Brandon Cooks would be good over there. I thought a guy, you know, you go make a move for, you know, uh hell, go make that move for DeAndre Hopkins. But there were so many wide receivers in the draft that you could have went and got to help this guy out. I mean, he's it's basically Devonte Adams or Bus, so but I still think that that's enough. I think that's more than enough to beat uh, the the Vikings. I I, I got the Packers uh, winning this game. I, I'll say twenty four seventeen. Twenty four seventeen. I'll, I'll I'll take them. Um. So we'll, we'll see. You're, you're giving a score. I haven't been giving scores. You ain't giving no score. Okay. I, we'll, I think I think it's gonna be. I think it's going to be about 31 14. Ooh. Wow, you, you got them blowing I think out. I think whoever's got Aaron Rodgers, they probably need to keep him playing. Period. Okay. In, in fantasy leagues. Because I think this guy is going to shoot it out and make Green Bay second guess whether or not they're actually going to. Uh, whether or not they're actually going to get rid of him. Yeah, I, I, I just, just got a feeling. It's, it's mind, it's mind blowing to me. Uh, Ron Thomas says uh, they need to go get Muhammad Sanu. That's Des Bryant, Muhammad Muhammad Sanu. I mean, there's guys out there that you could go get that that I just think could really help you. Like you have, I don't believe in Mar Marquez Valdez Scantling. Uh, L Lazard, he's pretty good, but I mean, you really need a number two guy that that you can line up on the other side of Devontae Adams that can go make a play. And right. when you look at when you look at the the two games that the Packers played against the 49ers, that's what they they just they took Devontae Adams out of that game. They're like, we're not. You have one receiver. We don't respect the rest of your receivers. You know, and they were up on them like fifty to nothing in both the games. You know, in the combined score. So I just, I just thought that with as heavy as a wide receiver draft that this was, I just thought that they would have went out and got somebody. So uh, we'll see how that goes. So moving along to the next game, we got a, a AFC South game: uh, the Indy uh, Indy Colts versus Jacksonville. Uh, the the new look Colts, you know, with uh, the Philip Rivers Indianapolis Colts. That's that that seems very uh, weird to say with all of his years with the Chargers, but he's a, he's a new guy over with the Colts, and uh, you're going in against a very just pedestrian Jags team. I think the Jags are the worst team in the league. I think they're going to have the worst record in the league. I don't see them winning, but maybe three games this year. Um, and I think that this is a blowout. I think that this is an absolute blowout. I think you, after watching the game last night and seeing the game that Clyde Edwards Hilaire had, I think you see Manuel, uh, Marlon Mack and, and the new kid, uh, 
out of Wisconsin, Jonathan Taylor. I think you see them run all up and down the field on the Jags. And I think Phillip Rivers hits a couple of, you know, a couple of deep strikes to T.Y. Hilton. And I think this is a blowout. I got this game. I don't even think it's close. I think you're looking 35 to – I'm going to say 35-17. Well, I mean, you know, they have no receivers. I mean, you know, they, they let Ramsey escape. They lost Fournette. I mean, come on. I don't even know who the starting running back is for Jacksonville now. I mean, everybody's on the waiver wire in fantasy football trying to grab who they think might would be Jacksonville's starting running back. Uh, they they got a couple of nice guys, you know, uh, DJ Chark. I, 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 think he's, I think he's pretty good. But they have no playmakers on offense. And I just think that. The Colts do, and I think this is a blowout. I think this is I, I think that I think this is your blowout of the week. I think this is your blowout of the week. I would not I would not be surprised if the Colts put up 35, 40 points in this game. 35, 42 points in this game. So funny, funny you should say that because in the pick a league, that's one of the tiebreakers who you think is to score the most not the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, I, I I don't even think it's going to be close. I'm not even. And I put Jacksonville as scoring the least. Scoring the least amount of points. Yeah, I did. I did. I mean, I I just think it's going to be ugly. I think Jacksonville is going to be very bad. I think they're going to be very very bad. And I think they're tanking for Trevor Lawrence. I think they're doing everything they can to. Oh wait a How's it? How's it? Devon says. Trevor. 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 I, I, I just don't see it. So that's your cartoon game of the week. I I, I think that's a, a, a blowout game there. Moving on, we got another uh, NFC Speaking NFC North battle. Devon. Speaking of Devon. <laughs> Speaking of Devon and his, his homeboy, uh, Mitch Trubisky. We got the Chicago Bears and Mitchell Trubisky, Chicago Bears versus Matthew Stafford coming back. Uh, look. I, I've I've gone on record and I make no qualms about this. I, I don't think Mitchell Trubisky is a good quarterback. Also, it's looking like Chicago's gonna be it without their starting running back, David Montgomery. Uh and I just I, I don't trust Mitchell Trubisky. Uh you look at the Lions, uh Matthew Stafford's back, you know, Kenny Galladay, he's an absolute monster. Marvin Jones, he's a he's an absolute monster, Hawkinson. Uh, carry on Johnson, and uh, I don't know if Swift is playing in this game, but I'm going to take the Lions in this game. I think the Lions win this game. Uh, I'm going to say uh, 21, 21 to 10. Where's this game at? I have no earthly idea. I don't know where. I, where the I'm pretty is. certain that I took Chicago. And I still think Chicago is going to win it because I do believe in Mitch Trubisky. Oh. Uh, I just think that they need to get him some protection. He, the guy never has time to throw the ball. And he needs some damn receivers that when he does get the ball to him, that, you know, they can catch the damn ball. Um, defensively, we know defensively that defense is going to be stout. Now, is this – does Matt come back this year and, and have a good season? Because last season he didn't have a great season. But I, I'm still taking the Bears. I'm, I'm the Bears. The Bears. Okay. Not, Sounds good. Not the Lions. The Bears. Not the Lions. The Bears. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. I'm going to read some of these comments here. Ethan Tweet said Packers win. Uh, Ron Thomas said they need to go get some new. Ron Thomas said Colts will win 37 to 2. <laughs> okay. Dalton Smith, it pains me to say this. I'm picking the Colts. Uh Galladay is list is doubtful on Sunday. And Dalton says, I'm taking the Bears 24-17. Okay. All right. Next game. We got the uh we got the Las Vegas Raiders. That's that's going to take some getting used to. We got the Las Vegas Raiders uh, playing the Carolina Panthers, and I do believe this game is in Carolina. I, I believe this game is in Carolina. Does it matter? No, it really doesn't. Um, I'm I'm on the Raiders bandwagon. I'm on the Raiders bandwagon. I think the I think 
John Gruden and Mike Mayock are building a contender over there. They're, the drafts that they've had, the players that they picked up, you look at um, – they they really went out and got some players. You look at um, Hunter Renfro. You look at uh, 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 Henry Ruggs picking up Henry Ruggs. Uh, the kid uh, Josh Jacobs, he's a monster. Waller's a monster, and all David Gar- Carr's got to do is not uh, Derek Carr. I keep wanting to call him David. David's his brother. Derek Carr. All Derek Carr's got to do is. Spread the ball around to those weapons and and feature uh, Josh Jacobs. I, I think you hand the ball to Josh Jacobs, let him pound it, and then you run some play action. And I believe Henry Rudd is going to break a bomb. I think he's going to. I think he's going to hit him with a bomb tomorrow. This guy is a speedster. If he gets his hands on the ball in open field, I think he's gone. And I think he fits what the, what they want to do. Al Davis would have loved. Al Davis would have loved Henry Ruggs. They love drafting those. He loved drafting those fast receivers. And I think this kid, I didn't think he was a best wide receiver in the draft, but I thought he was a damn good receiver. And I got the, I got the Raiders winning this game. I'm going to say 24, 24 to 12. I, I could go along with that. Um, I, I think Raiders absolutely win. Uh I, you know, I think they were they were trying to build something, and they actually was trying to get that receiver in there with AB last year, and then AB not acted the fool uh, last year and stayed in in, in in LA with the Raiders. Um, I honestly think that they definitely would have been in the playoffs. I really okay. did. I mean, if he wasn't acting the fool, he gives him another another outlet another receiver and we know he's not just a regular receiver on that football field you know, as no, much no, as no. i can't stand him and, and and all the baggage that comes with him if he had just uh, you know acted co- coherently sane and stayed <laughs> with them <laughs> sorry but but yeah, I mean, I knew that I, I told everybody what was going to happen. I told you, I told everybody before the season started exactly what AB was going to do. And I said, hmm, and he won't last long in, in New England either because they won't put uh, up with his crap. They, he played one game, caught one touchdown, and it was gone the next week. He was leaving leaving messages with the girl that he had issues with. You know, he wasn't supposed to contact her. And then he gets another shot with the Saints. They tell him not to bring a, an entourage, and he, he doesn't bring an entourage. He brings his entourage with him. So, yeah. yeah we, we. So next, here we go. It's that time of year again. It's that time of year again. All of my, my, uh, my Buffalo people out there, uh, shout out to Ethan Tweedy. And- Can I say something before you go any further? Yes. Okay. For all those Buffalo Bills fans who, who you know, call Marcus Betts the Bills hater, just know that he's taken the Bills in this game. <laughs> and I am taking the Bills in this game. Uh, I, I, I am taking the Bills in this game. I think the, I think the Jets... I think that we just talked about Jacksonville being terrible. Well, I think the team is right a, a, a step just a, a step just above the the Jags or the Jets. Hey, look, look! I'm, I'm gonna take my glasses off so you can see it really good. Poor Le'Veon Bell. Oh, as you can see, Ramona Ramona's uh, reaching out and showing her compassion for Le'Veon Bell. Uh, <laughs> I I. I think this is a laugh or two. Um, look, for all you people out there who say I'm a hater and 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 you know I I I just hate the buffalo the Buffalo Bills. Just so you know, and I, and you can verify you can verify this. You can ask certain people. I actually have Josh Allen in two of my fantasy football leagues. I do. So for all you people out there, I I think he has a better season this year. Uh, I got the I got. I, I oh, think this. Wait, wait, wait! Stop. What? Well, wait. Well, did you did you just admit 
that you have Josh Allen on a couple of fantasy football teams? I do. I, listen, I I keep telling I keep telling y'all, I'm not a I'm not a when when it comes to fantasy football, and you know we, we you know we're kind of venturing over to fantasy football, and that's fine. When it comes to fantasy football, you cannot be a homer. You cannot be a homer in fantasy football. I told you that. Me and you, we played in the league last year, and I told you, you, you know, you were getting all those Steelers. No, you can't no do. I didn't know what to stop. I got Ben Roethlisberger, which was not a bad quarterback. No, he wasn't. I had Aaron Rodgers on the bench. <laughs> and that was the problem. You had Aaron Rodgers on the bench. You should have had Aaron Rodgers playing. I he played the rest of the season. Ben only played one and a half games, dude. Yeah, he only Come played on. one and a half. But, but yeah, I, I do. I, I'm admitting it. Uh, a lot of the guys here, Will and Bombard, he can, he can, he can vouch for me, and uh, Tito, he can vouch for me as far as that. But I got, uh, I think that that's a blowout. I got the Bills. I got the Bills. Eh, twenty-eight. Twenty-eight to. 10. I don't, I don't 10. think they scored 10 points. Uh, they might and they might not. And I, I think, think that, that might score a touchdown. I they think that the bill I think that the I think that the Bills defense will be the second highest scoring defense special teams this this week. Only behind the Colts the Colts defense and special teams playing against the Jags. So, yes, there we go. All the people say I never picked the Bills. I'm picking the Bills to beat the snot out of the Jets. Moving on. <laughs> he has to move on because that, that was a bad taste in his mouth. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, we got to we, – we, we, really. <laughs> we're, we're venturing over to Ramona's AFC, uh, AFC North. We got the the cle the we got the brownies. Shout out to Walter Ringfield, War Raw over there on AZ one hundred, and we got uh, Goldie Hawkins uh, and and uh, and Letitia. We got their uh, Baltimore Ravens over there. Uh, MVP. Uh, I think this is a big. I, I think this is a big game. I think that this is a big big game. I think it's is this the same? game of the weekend. I, I, I look. I, I'm actually looking forward to this game. I am looking forward to this game. I really want to see what. I want to see if Baker Mayfield can. Look, he he's he's had some terrible coaches. I think Stefanski comes in there. I, I didn't like Freddie Kitchens. I think Stefanski comes in there and really opens up this offense. They got a bunch of weapons. They just extended Kareem Hunt. You got Nick Chubb. You got Odell Beckham Jr. You got Jarvis Landry. You got Austin Hooper. You got, I mean, they've got weapons everywhere. And it's time they, they went and addressed their offensive line. And it's time for Baker Mayfield to step up. It's, it's time. It's just time. You're the number one pick in the draft. Uh, you're, you're, you're behind, you're the number one pick in the draft, and and I don't know if you're the third best quarterback right now in your draft. You, you know, this is the draft that's Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen and Josh Rosen and Sam Darnold and and Baker Mayfield, and Baker has not lived up to his potential. And you cannot say they have not went out and surrounded him with weapons. You know, you got two stud running backs and two stud receivers, good tight end and. The, the, the offensive line, you got a pretty good defense that can hold it down for you. Um, I am going to pick. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm still picking the Ravens. I'm still going to pick the Ravens. I'll, I'll I'll call this one a squeaker. I think the I think the Browns put up a hell of a fight. I'll say 27-24 Ravens. I, I can see 2724. Um I, I'm also but I no, I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. I can't I can't do it. I can't You can't pick the Ravens or you can't pick the Ravens. I know this is I know this is I like I cannot I cannot say that Baker will score twenty four points. Because he won't. I'm not I don't think it's Baker. I think I think uh well, you know what? I could stop. What the hell you mean it ain't Baker? No, I'm saying what I'm saying is 
I think Nick Chubb, they've got to run Nick Chubb. That's their, that's their, that, you know, run Nick Chubb, establish Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, and then they need to run some play action. But here's, that's the, the, problem. Way they here's the problem. They had these same running backs last year. Yes. Granted, they, granted, Kareem Hunt didn't show up, what, week seven, eight, something like that. Here's the problem. When you don't have a quarterback who can hand the ball off without fumbling or who can do those little play action passes to help open up a running game, that's your problem. Now, here's my question. I, I've seen these little levels to this things that we do where we're talking about players that could be gone, quarterbacks that could be gone. Is this the season? He's got everything he needs on offense and defense both. Now tell me, if he doesn't get this team to the playoffs this season, is Baker Mayfield done? Is uh, he gone? I, I don't I think they let him play out his contract. He was in the 2018 draft. So you look at 2018, 19, 20. This is third year. This is his third year. And this is his third coach. Well, and this I give you that. I give you that. Cordell I mean, Stewart. You have to go up in there. You got to Cordell change Stewart. your office. Cordell Stewart went through how many quarterback coaches uh, during his tenure with Pittsburgh? Yeah. Seven. Seven. Okay. And that and that hurts quarterbacks. Yes, when you got to go up in there and you got to learn a whole nother system every offseason. Look, Tom Brady played in the same system for 20 years. Yep. For 20 years. You know what I'm saying? When you got to come in there every offseason and your coach gets fired and your offensive coordinator gets fired and you got to learn a whole nother all the new terminology, that that makes a difference. So I mean, I, I don't think Baker Mayfield's a bad quarterback, but you're right. But I, I don't think they drop him after this year. But if he, I think next year is more the thing because you still, you still got him on a rookie contract. That's what teams look at. I want to have this guy still in his rookie contract, and then you still he, because he was a first round pick, you still have that fifth year option on him. So this, but this year is a big year for him. You're definitely right. I'm going, I'm going to still take the Ravens though in that game. Oh, I'm taking the Ravens. I, I think. I think, and it won't be easy, and, and, and there's not going to be a lot of points scored in this game because one thing I can say about the Cleveland Browns is they're all healthy and Miles Garrett's back. That defense is set. That defense is vicious. Um, you know, if if they can – that's the only reason why I would even give them a chance is because of the running game that Cleveland's got. But I just don't believe in, in, in Baker Mayfield. Okay. I just don't. And, I mean, and, and so I think the Ravens win, but I think it's going to be like like 21 to 14. 21-14. I'll go 21-14. Okay. okay. So uh, moving on to the next game, uh, we, got, we got the Battle of the Birds. We got Russell Wilson Seahawks. And um, we got the Atlanta Falcons. Um, and look, I, I, this is another matchup that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, Russell Wilson, this guy's just incredible. I, I, I think he's the, I think he's the third best quarterback in the league. When you just look at, you know, when you look at Lamar Jackson and you look at Lamar Jackson and and Patrick Mahomes, I, I still think he's the the old dog. This is kind of the you know, he he's just he's consistent. Um, I, I like Chris Carson. I like Lockett. I, I like uh, DK Metcalf. Um, and they they get very creative over there. And I just I don't I don't think Atlanta's defense can stop them. Hey, I just I, I have a question for one of our viewers. Okay. Hey, Rob Thomas. Anybody else who might know this question? When's the last time Seattle's went to Atlanta and beat Atlanta? You might know. I have no earthly idea. Seattle doesn't do well when they have to travel across the country to the East Coast and play. And this oh, is fine. this is in Atlanta. This is Atlanta's first home game. Yeah. And some of the moves Atlanta have made is impressive. And I I think 
Atlanta wins this game. I'm taking the I'm taking the Falcons over Seattle. And I, I I wouldn't if this was in Seattle, I would take Seattle. But I am taking the Falcons because first game of the season, jitters. We also know the offenses usually have an advantage um, in just a regular season or off season. Your offense usually comes out and has an advantage for the first couple of games. Now that we've had no preseason, we've had no no training camp really that we're they're really used to. I think that you're going to see uh, Matt Ryan and company and Julio light it up. Okay. Uh, strike, they're going to strike first, and they're going to strike fast, and they're going to strike hard, and they're going to keep striking. That's what I think. Okay. I mean, we see the we see the return of Todd Gurley. Uh, we're going to find out about Todd Gurley. I just think that the addition of Jamal Adams to that to that Seattle secondary that they've been needing a player like that, a impact player. Uh, I just, I, I, I think Russell Wilson, I just think he's the truth. I like Chris Carson. Um, I, I like, uh, Carlos Hyde. That's a nice, that, I think that'll be a nice little one, two punch early in the season before they get back, uh, Rashad Penny. And I got, I got Seattle winning this game. Um, I think it's a shoot. I, I'm going to say 31-28. 31-28 Seattle over uh, Atlanta. And, and like I said, if this was in Seattle, I would, I would take Seattle. But Seattle does – and they never do well coming to the East Coast and playing. They don't. They just don't. So, I don't know if it's the, the time travel. I don't, I don't really know if it's the – I just I don't know, and plus with all the COVID and everything else that's going on, you know, and places that they're not going to be able to go and do things the way they usually do. I just I think Atlanta being at home has that advantage. I think most of your home teams, oh no teams doubt, are going to have advantage this year. No, no doubt, no doubt, absolutely no doubt. Okay. Why don't we? Uh, why don't we? Uh, before we go on, let's get that. Uh, Let's get those uh, Pittsburgh. Let's see them Pittsburgh joints. Well, we're gonna we're gonna actually go to the Eagles and do those first. Okay. Or the second one. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um. Look okay, right here. Here you go. I admit I like these eagles. You like those eagles? You like those eagles, Joyce? All right, uh, any video, pay attention to this next video. Those are just
I gotta do it one more time. I work it, I work it, boy, I'm all in. Love it. So uh, y'all seen these? Uh, we're we're putting these out there. Uh, make sure you go to the the, the Rise Up Family uh, page. These uh, the link will be in there to get raffle tickets. Tell your friends about it if they're interested. Uh, they're real. They're awesome. And we got more stuff. We actually got more stuff coming. Uh, we got two more pair coming. We have. Well, I'm going to keep it a surprise, but we got two more pair coming. So make sure you uh, uh, get with that that link. Uh, Ramona will get you squared away with that link and go in there and get them tickets. The more tickets you buy, uh, this helps the uh, podcast group uh, uh, get equipment. Some of these shows, you know, we have to, you know, get money to to, uh, you know, for equipment and stuff like that to keep bringing you all these quality shows. So we appreciate your support and, you know, uh, go get in there and get your tickets. OK, so moving on to the next game. Uh, we got the Tyrod Taylor Chargers, <laughs> the, the Tyrod, the Tyrod Taylor and number one overall draft pick Joe Burrows. The Bengals are in the house. Uh, uh, Ramona, I'll let you go first on this one. How do you see this going? What, anything you notice about this game? Anything that catch your mind, catch your ear and eye? Well, church mm -hmm. defense is not a bad defense. I don't think that they've made a whole lot of improvements to Cincinnati's offensive line. So it kind of makes me wonder. I mean, the game's in Cincinnati. First home game, fans are going to be out there galore. As much as I cannot stand the Bengals, uh, out of all the teams in my division, I can't stand them the worst. <laughs> I don't like none of them, but the Bengals, I just – and I, I can't even tell you why. <clears throat> but um, I, I, I'm i going to go with Cincinnati. Oh, because I think both teams are bad. Yeah, I, I, um, <clears throat> I, I don't think the Chargers are that bad. I think the Chargers pass rush is going to get after Joe Burrow. When you look at uh, – uh, Melvin Ingram and and uh, Joey Bosa, uh, Derwin James, he's out for the season. But I like some of the other moves that they made. I like the the linebacker that they picked up out of Oklahoma, Kenneth Murray. I think he's and then uh, Austin Eckler has the uh, he has the backfield all to himself. Um, he had a hell, he had a great season last year. You look at. Uh, uh, Keenan Allen and Hunter Henry and I think and Tyrod Taylor his he, you know he's not going to lose you the game he's not going to do anything spectacular he's going to distribute the ball to these weapons and I just see the Chargers I, I see the Chargers getting after Joe Burrow I, you know he's he had a pretty great college career he had a pretty awesome season he, last year wait, 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 wait a minute wait a minute stop did you ever hear of Burrow before last year, nope, no, nope. oh, fine, nope. And I'm saying he had a great, he had a magical look. Some people think that they're good or whatever because they have one magical season, Philadelphia Eagles in the Super Bowl. But you have one magical seat, you have one magical season, and people just think that that's going to carry on. You had you, you, you caught lightning in a bottle. Hey, and that's not in this decade. Let me let me just throw that out there. A Super Bowl in this decade. I'm just saying. I'm. I just. 
he had a great season last year. He had an all-time season last year, won the Heisman. Just a great, just a you know, had a great season. But these you're in the NFL, and these guys want to initiate you to the NFL. I could very I could see uh I could see Bosa and and Melvin Ingram just getting after this kid and making life difficult for him. Uh, you don't know what the hell you'll get from AJ Green. You know, I, I and you got a rookie quarterback out there and, and a ferocious pass rusher. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the LA Chargers. Uh, I'm gonna say 21, 21 to 21-10. How do you see this going? I'm going to stick with my instinct and go with the defense on the defense side of the ball. And I'm, I'm going to go with the Chargers. Um, even though it's insensing, I'm going to go with the Chargers. Okay. Yeah, I just, I don't see, the, I don't see any way that the Bengals win this game. I just, I don't, I don't see it. Um, and I just think that they, they get after this kid. They really want to make a statement to him. So uh, next game, we got a, a battle of the uh we got a, a battle of the um we, we got a battle of the um a NFC West and I we got the Arizona Cardinals versus versus the 49ers and let's uh Ramona what do you think about this real quick? Oh I, I think that the 49ers Cardinals, I, I, I like what, what the Cardinals are doing, uh, and they're building that offense up, but they still don't have much of a defense. And I think that the you know, the offense of the 49ers, they have a, a running game. I think that that's why they lost the Super Bowls, because they went away from their running game and Mozart. Um, but I think defensively, the 49ers are going to stop the Cardinals. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the 49ers. Okay. My, my dogs agree. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So, yeah, so um, I um, – look, the 49ers, the 49ers, um, you know, they suffered a lot of disappointment last year coming off of that – off of that, uh, that really bad, heartbreaking loss to the, to the um, Chiefs in the Super Bowl. And um, – <clears throat> Look, I I've gone on record. I think that the I think that the Cardinals really uh, I think that the Cardinals um, they new look uh, DeAndre Hopkins and um, I'm telling you, I think that these guys I think the Cardinals got a good team. I think the <laughs> uh, I think Kyler Murray. I think he's the truth. Uh, I like the I like the kid picking up them picking up King and Drake, um, and I I would not be surprised if the if the, I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the Cardinals in this game. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the Cardinals in this game. It's not because I hate the 49ers. I just think that a lot of times with that Super Bowl letdown, I still think that the 49ers have an incredible team. Um, but I just think that Super Bowl let down, and I think that the I think that the Cardinals are going to have a hell of a year. I think they're going to have a hell of a year. Uh, I think it's going to be a close game, but I think a lot of people are sleeping on the Cardinals. And I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna say Cardinals twenty four twenty one. Sorry about that. I muted it so I can host my dogs. Um, I'm I'm still gonna I'm gonna stick with the 49ers. Uh, I, I just think that um, their offense. I do think Cardinals offense is absolutely improved 45 percent better than what they were last year with the addition of Hopkins. But I still think they are lacking in defense. 
Uh, not that I'm sold on Garoppolo. You know I'm not. <laughs> I, I'm not. But I, I'm sold on the fact that he can throw the ball enough to get that running game going. And, I, you know, they still have that three-headed monster in that backfield running that football. So, uh, and, you know, you look, you look at their tight end. Um, I, I just think that offensively, as much as I love Hopkins and as much as I think Kyler Murray is going to love Hopkins and I think their connection is going to be great, I still think that their defense is not going to be able to stop what the 49ers offense can do. So I'm taking the I'm taking the Niners in that. I'm one. taking the Niners. Okay. Sounds good. Uh we got another barn burner. Yes, we do. We got a bar, we got a barn burner. We talked about some of the other games. I think this game right here, I think this is gonna be I think this I, this may end up being the game of the week. It, it might be. Um you got two. You got two of the greatest quarterbacks that have ever played. Uh, and I think when it, I think when it's all said and done, whoever's the first guy to retire, uh, <laughs> it, it's it's basically. I, I think they're trying to outdo each other. I, they're one and two with all time leading touchdowns, one and two all time yards, all time. And I just think you know they both want to make a statement here. You know you got. Uh, you got uh, Tom Brady and and versus Drew Brees, but I will say this: uh, it's looking like Mike Evans is not going to play in this game. It's looking like Mike Evans is not going to play in this game, so that 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 changes a lot. Uh, I don't know how many carries Leonard Fournette's going to get, but I'm. I, I think that the Saints are a more complete team. I think it's going to take the I think it's going to take the Bucks a couple of weeks to get on track. And it's not that they don't have a good team, but with no, with not having the offseason and bringing in all of these different, you know, these new pieces on the team, especially your quarterback and Tom Brady like like I said earlier, Tom Brady ran the same offense for 20 years. And this is his first time learning a, you know, learning a new offense in 20 years. And, and I think him and Bruce Arians are going to work together well. But I think it's going to take maybe two or three weeks for them to get on track where they're really, you know, clicking on all cylinders. And also, without Mike Evans, I just don't they're, – they're not as dynamic as they normally would be. I think you'll see a little bit more Gronk, a little bit more O.J. Howard, a little bit more Chris Godwin. But I think that the Saints – I think that the Saints have more – chemistry together right now because they've been playing together. I think uh, Emmanuel Sanders establishes himself, and I'm going to take the Saints in this game. I'm taking the Saints as well. Yeah, I'm going to take the Saints in and, this and, and I don't want to because I hate picking against Bruce Arians, but yeah. I hate picking Tom Brady. So it's like a, you know, stuck between a rock and a hard place. But yeah. I but I, I respect the hell out of Drew Brees. Um, I respect, I, don't get me wrong, I respect what Tom Brady has brought to the NFL. I really do. Uh, and quite frankly, I think it was both him and Belichick. Yes, I'm giving both of them credit uh, for the dynasty that they had. I, I think that the Patriots dynasty is on the rebuild. Uh, I don't know that Cam Newton's the answer. I really don't think he is. Um... But I've never been sold on Cam Newton either. So, you know, there you go. Uh, his, his his attitude after that Super Bowl loss just pretty much made it, it, it. Everything is like sour milk when it comes to him now. For me, anyway. Okay. Here you go. Here we go. Uh, Dallas Cowboys, the Sunday night game, Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Versus the L.A. Rams at the Rams' new uh, stadium, um, SoFi Stadium in, in L.A., California. Um, can, I, look, can I roll my eyes? <laughs> you know, and there's not going to be any fans at this game. 
But I, I will tell you what, I, I am really excited to see what Mike McCarthy does, how he utilizes these receivers, how he utilizes C.D. Lamb and, and Michael Gallup and Amari Cooper and how he incorporates uh, uh, Zeke and Tony Pollard. I, I just think that Jason Garrett was such a bad coach. I cannot reemphasize that enough. I just can't stress that enough. He just he was a bad he was a bad he was a bad coach. And I think this guy's a breath of fresh air. I think he's on a mission to prove a lot of stuff and uh, show that you know his last couple of years in Green Bay were a fluke. And I think the I think the Cowboys come out, and I think this is the C.D. Lamb show. I really do believe that. Everything that I've heard about this kid, everything that I've heard about this kid at, in um, at training camp, they said that he's just he has uh, just showed. The, they said this kid has just been dynamite, and for him to come in there, he just has to come in there and blend in with everybody else. He doesn't have to go there and be the number one receiver. I think he comes in there, and I think who's going to cover this guy? Like you, you, who are you? How do you play these guys? I think you see a lot of three wide receiver sets. I think you see the emergence of Blake Jarwin. Remember that name? And I, I got the Cowboys winning this game. I have them going up in there. Uh, I like what they've done on the defensive side of the ball with Don Tari Poe. I like what they've done with uh, the, picking up Alden Smith and just all the pass rushers and moves that they had. And I hated to see Gerald McCoy go down, but to have somebody uh, – they got – you know, Alden Smith and Tyron Crawford and Demarcus Lawrence. And and I just think that these these guys are going to I think that their their offense is going to be incredible. And the defense just has to be decent for them to have success. I got the Cowboys in this game. 20, 28, 24. I don't think it's that close at all. Uh, I don't. I'm sorry. I think Dallas goes in there and just kicks ass and takes names and just leads the Rams with maybe a touchdown. I think Dallas wins this game hands down. Okay. I think I think the Rams are the last the last team in that division at the end of the season, and I think that they're, you're going to start seeing a lot of trades coming out. And then trying to build up some draft picks. I think they're going to have to rebuild that team. I don't think that they have a first round pick next year either. And as much as I, and I like Jalen Ramsey, who does Jalen Ramsey follow? Who does Jalen Ramsey follow? You know, I'm, who are you going to put Jalen Ramsey on? Mari Cooper, Gallup, CD Lamb? Who do you put him on? I mean, he's a, as great of a cornerback as he is. You only have one of him, and I don't know. I don't even know who the other guy is on the other side. So I, I see the Cowboys winning that pretty easily. Uh, Monday night football, last game, last no, game of the week. No, there's there's no? two games on Monday there's, night. There's two Monday night games. Okay, the first Monday night game, you got Ramona Steelers versus the the New York Football Giants. Uh, the return of Big Ben. The return of Big Ben. Big Ben's back in the house. Missing, missing it. I think a, a key uh, offensive lineman too. I look. I I think is this in New York or is this in uh, Pittsburgh? It's in New York. It's in New York. Look, there, there's this. There's what this, difference does it matter? There's no crowds. Well. That's yes, that's true. I, I was just saying though, know, normally Ben has more success at home than he does on the road. But I think Big Ben See, that's I think this really, may be one of his That's not really true. You need to go back and do some figuring up on that because that's not true. He usually does better on the road. No, he trust me, as a guy who's had him on his fantasy football team for years. I told you he had two back-to-back -back weeks where he threw for six touchdown passes, and I had him on the bench. I know this, I and know. it killed me, and I never forget that. I, you do realize that only one of those think six he comes times, out. Only one of those was at home. The other one wasn't at home. Yeah, i i got I got the Steelers winning this, uh, and I just think that Ben Roth is. I, I think the I think the 
Steelers are firing on all cylinders in this game. I think you see uh I think you see Juju Smith Schuster reestablish himself as the as the top playmaker on that team. I think you see a lot of James Conner. I'm interested to see the kid Deontay Johnson. Uh see if Chase uh, Claypool can get out. There. Deontay Johnson's out. He's out. Yep. I mean, he's this a, might be he's not officially out. Um, he's not officially out, but he didn't practice, um, yesterday. And usually if they don't practice on Thursday, they're usually not in the game on Sunday, but I know he's got a foot injury. They don't think it's like, you know, like serious foot injury, but when you're, when you're a receiver, you know, and having to jump up and, and catch passes and whatnot. Same thing with the running back. So, yeah, you know, yeah. you can get a buy, buy with the foot in a little bit better than your receiving core and your running back. So, but uh, I think that, I think that Claypool is going to have a huge game. Yeah. And the reason why I think he will is because they're either going to double Juju or we're going to double Washington or they're going to try and double both. And that's going to leave that wide out Claypool. I think he's going to have a big game in this game against the Giants. But I'm going to tell you something. What I what I foresee happening is that defense absolutely just dominating the hell out of that Giants offense. I I think you I think you see that this Pittsburgh I, I think you see these Pittsburgh pass rushers have Danny Danny Dobbs running for his life. I really do believe that. I think they unleash. T.J. Watt, I think they unleash Bud Dupree. I think Cam Hayward gets in there and wrecks havoc. And somewhere in this game, Minka Fitzpatrick does something, makes some type of play. Two a strip, I'm calling it now. Two INT. Two, two picks, a uh, 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 sack, for, uh, uh, you know, a uh, a pick six, you know, a, a fumble, a, f a fumble, and take it in for the touchdown. He's going to do something in this game, you know, strip Saquon Barkley or or sack uh, Daniel Jones. I think he does something in this game. He's just that type of player. Uh, I'm telling you, watch out for Devin Bush this year too. No doubt, I'm, I'm really excited for that defense. I I tried to get them in fantasy. Everybody scooped them up real quick. They were actually the number one rated defense in fantasy football and everybody was trying to get them. Uh, so I think, I think uh, I'm going to say big Ben comes out three touchdowns. I, I I'm going to say 31, uh, 31, 31, 31, 21, 31, 21. I think they shut down Saquon Barkley and, and that they, pass. Rush. They are not scoring 21 points against Pittsburgh defense. That ain't happening. <laughs> No, no, nope. I don't even care that we didn't have a preseason in training camp. I'm telling you, that team is not scoring 21 points against Steelers defense. It ain't happening. So, uh, last game of the week, the, the second Monday night game, you got Tennessee versus the Broncos. Uh, look, the, 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 the Titans, the Titans. In Denver, but I don't think it matters. I, I really yeah, don't. Uh, think it no, go up there as a running back and run up there in Denver. Yeah, I, it don't matter. Look, <laughs> look, you got you got Derrick Henry. <laughs> you got Derrick Henry up there, and I think that there's a lot of people overlooking some of the weapons on Tennessee. Uh, also, they went in. You know, we we talked about it earlier at the beginning of the show in the news and notes. Uh, they 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 had the, you know they picked up Jadavion Clowney. I think he makes a difference on that, on the, you know, on that defense. But also, it's looking like Cortland Sutton, their number one pick, their number one wide receiver. It looks, it's looking like he's not playing. And I just look, Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is a unicorn. He's a unicorn. He is. There's nothing like him in the league. The the man is a. He's a bruiser. He's a battering ram. And I have single-handedly see, – I've seen this guy single-handedly break the wheel of a defense. I've seen that. Where 
he's running and guys are just, I don't want to tackle this guy. By the end of the game, I do not want to tackle this guy. And, you know, I just, I think they go out there, they establish the run. You see something out of uh, A.J. Brown, uh, Jonu Smith. I, I think you something, but this is this. Make no mistake about it, this: is the Derrick Henry show. So I, I got Tennessee winning this game. I could see Derrick Henry, you know, scoring a couple of touchdowns. I could see him, you know, running for 150 yards. And I'm I'm taking Tennessee in here. I'm going to say uh, not a lot of points. I'll say eh, 24, 24, 14. Oh, my score from from. Uh... I, I like the kid Drew Locke. I think he goes out there and does something. I I, I like the one two punch of Melvin Gordon and Philip Lindsay, but Derrick Henry, he's just that that guy. He's different. He's different. He he's he's different. He's just th- there's nothing like this guy. So I I think they come out there and, and get the win over there in in Denver. Well, let's just remember. A lot's going to depend on the quarterback play of Tennessee because I don't care who you are and what offense you run. You cannot be one dimensional. And if your quarterback is not doing his job, he's got to be able to do his job to open up a running game. If no, that, that's, not, that's not what they, that's not what they do. They run the ball to open up the passing game. They beat you up with Derrick Henry. You can put then, it either way. You, wait a minute. You can put it either way you want. You can say a team has three wide receivers that are like two that would be starters on, you know, number one receivers on another team. And you can say, oh, well, they use the running game to open up the passing game. Well, it's the same thing. You open, you, you do what it takes to wherever your strengths lie. Their strength is the running game. So, they're going to use that passing game to open up the running game, period. We know this. Well, no, guess no, what? If your quarterback can't throw the ball down the field and and get some completions, your running game ain't going to help you either. I, I think that they win in spite of – Ryan uh, Tannehill. They're going to run the ball regardless because they're like, we are going to establish the, we are going to establish this, and we don't care that you know what we're trying to do. We're going to, we're going to establish this running game. And that look, they're not going in there saying, oh my gosh, we got to stop Ryan Tannehill. They're going in there saying we cannot let Derrick Henry look. I'm sure that Denver is looking at that at that playoff game against the Patriots where Derrick Henry ran all up and down the field on them. They are looking at that playoff game where Derrick Henry ran all up and down the field on the Ravens. He he is a one-man gang. He is He's like what Jerome Bettis used to be. We're going to beat you up with this running game, We're gonna and we're going to run it some more, and we're going to run it some more, and then there, everybody starts bringing up their safeties and everybody is stacking that box. And then that makes your passing game a little bit easier. They're going to run the ball regardless. They're going to run the ball regardless. So it does make a difference where whether you're running to set up the pass or you're passing to set up the run. Because there are some teams that do that. They're like, we're going to run the ball regardless. The the Ravens, they run the football. They, they really don't – they'll throw the ball – but they want to run the ball down your throat and break your wheel because that's what breaks the will of another team. When you, when, when, when you have, when you're, I knew this really well being a Steelers fan. Well, yeah. I mean, you should know all about that. I mean, you're a Steelers fan. That's what the Steelers used to be. That's what they used to be known for. It's like, we're going to run Jerome Bettis down your throat and there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing. And then, you know, when you start stacking the box, then we're going to take some pot shots to to uh, Santonio Holmes or Plaxico Burris or or Heinz Ward. Heinz Ward wasn't really a burner. He got a lot of easy looks because teams were like, we cannot let Jerome Bettis just run the ball down our throat. And see, so that's a- what I think you're going to see teams do against the Tennessee Titans. I think you're wrong. I think. I think teams are automatically going to stack the middle and try to stop the run 
and that's the reason why you're going to have to use the damn passing game to op- open up the running game. You're yeah, going to have to keep the defenses. You're going to have to keep that defense. Um, but there, uh, there's some teams that don't yeah. care. There, there are some teams they don't care that you stab the boss. They're like, we're still going to run the ball, and you just can't stop us. And that's the way. That's the way Tennessee is. It's like we don't give a damn if you stop the bo- stack the box because we're going to run Derrick Henry and break and break you eventually. You're going to get taught when we give this the ball to him thirty times. Yeah, you might stop him a couple of times, but then you know he, he two yards. Five yards, seven yards, fifty-two yards, ninety-nine yards, and then at towards the end of the game, he starts breaking tackles and breaking the long runs off. I and agree. Then, Tr- uh, trust is we're going to see Noah Fant. Uh, Noah Fant, he came on. He came on late last year, uh, towards the end of the season. I was uh, really surprised with him. I, I think he's uh, a breakout tight end candidate uh for this year and yeah i i i totally agree with that i um i think you know with with uh portland with portland sutland it's looking like portland sutland he landed on his shoulder awkwardly i think you see a lot of uh jerry judy in this game i think you see jerry judy so you read some comments i do uh Let's see here. We have. Let's see here. We got Trust Raven says low scoring game. Ron Thomas says Titans will win. Trust Raven says Broncos with the upset. Eddie Vigil says only way they put up that many points is the Steelers special teams has a bad day. Yeah, okay. and they're going to have to have a really bad day in my opinion. Uh, let's see here. Broncos 27-20. Titans, Titans, uh, Ethan Tweedy says Titans. Trust Raven said they lost Casey to, to Denver, correct? Yes, uh, Casey, Casey left uh, Tennessee and went to Denver. Uh, yeah, uh, let's see here. Telling y'all don't sleep on Broncos, Drew Locke, Judy gonna ball, uh, Judge Judy. Gordon and Lindsey combo, don't sleep on Denver, you're gonna – See Noah Fant heavy. So uh, those are all your games. We got our picks. Uh, so we'll be, of course, we'll be, you know, reviewing those picks next see, next week and see who who won. I didn't get in the pickums. I didn't get in the pickums game. Did you? Did you just take down all of my picks? Uh, who did you take? You're taking Tennessee, right? Yes, yeah, so I'm taking Tennessee in that one. And I think uh, 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 Dalton Smith also says Von Miller losing Von Miller for the seasons that's going to be huge for the Broncos, and I agree with that. Uh, he went out in a freak accident in practice the other day, and he's out for the season. I think that's going to be a big loss for them. So um, I think they're going to have to do it a lot with uh, with uh, offense and put up some points. So as you all know, every week we do the uh, you know there's levels to this. There's levels to this. And uh, really quickly, and I, I'm going to let you go first, Ramona. Biggest breakout wide receiver in 2020. Who you got? And it doesn't have to be anybody on this list. There's somebody on this list or somebody else that you can think about that. that uh, uh, I think it's going to be C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb. Break, I, big, think that, I think Dak is probably the happy. Probably, I, I'm thinking he's going to be the, one of the happiest guys. Because uh, I think C.D. Lamb's going to help him get his money. I th- I, I totally agree with you. I, I'm sure Dak, after seeing the uh, Patrick Mahomes and and Deshaun Watson get paid, I, I'm I know he's just licking his chops. It's like I'm next. If he goes out there and does anything halfway, gets the Cowboys to the NFC Championship or Super Bowl, he can pretty much. He's a made man in Dallas if he's able to do that. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna. St- I'm gonna stay away from I'm gonna stay away from the home pick and I'm gonna go with uh I'm gonna go with Calvin Ridley. Uh I think you see more this year of him coming and and kind of starting to take I, I'm not saying he's the number one receiver for the uh for the for the Falcons, but Julio's getting up there a little bit. He's 30 years old and um I think you see this kid start, you know, getting more 
uh, care uh, more, you know, targets. And I, I'm, I'm going to roll with I'm going to roll with Calvin Ridley. Yeah, I, I and I can see that. I think AJ Brown will have a, a good year. I think his year will explode when they take uh, Antonio Brown. <laughs> when they get him on that team. You're just hoping for that, aren't you? You're just like, I hope they get Antonio. Uh, you Bruce. really you think I'm hoping that. for that? Hell no. Uh, I, no. No, I don't want him on. I do not want A.B. on the Baltimore Ravens. I know what kind of receiver he is. I do want him in their locker room. I ain't going to lie about that because we know everywhere he goes, he creates havoc. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, tear that locker room up inside. I don't care. Uh, but I think that when he does show up, I think A.J. Brown just, you know, gets exactly what he needed. So, that's just my opinion. But. Okay. Okay. Next, next topic. Man, we're going deep here. This is, I think this is a generational battle here. Who's the, who's the GOAT? Who's the GOAT? Is it, is it, is it these three guys here or is it somebody else we're missing here? Tom Brady. Joe Montana, Peyton Manning. Who's the GOAT? Who's he the GOAT quarterback? To me, he ain't on that list. He ain't on the list? Nope, he ain't on the list for me. Nope. All right, guys. Come on, viewers. Tell us. Who, who's the greatest quarterback of all time? Who who's do you all think is the GOAT? Dalton Smith says Montana. Montana. And he doesn't have to be on this list. Ron Thomas says Montana. Chuck Thomas, Brady, Montana, Manning. Oh, come on. Hey, Sharon. I'm going to piss you. Into the show, so you got here the last five minutes. Sharon saying Montana. Sharon saying Montana? Yep. All right. Uh, I am going to go first. Okay. Ladies first. I'm going first. Um, to me, the GOAT is not on that list. He's not up there on that picture. It has okay. got to be, for me, John Elway. I, and, I, and I said this, and me, me and Dre, we got into it. You know, he, he was like, no, it's Brett Favre. And I'm just like, man, John Elway used to kick Brett Favre's ass. He used to kick his ass. I'm Look, I, I grew up watching – uh, John Elway, and you know he had a lot of he had a, a lot of difficulties early because he didn't have a running game, you know. And I think all of these guys here have. Oh, he did. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. He had a running game. He at the end the of his career. No, no, no. He had a running game. He ran the ball because a lot of times, if he didn't yeah, run the he ball, was, he was going to be he wouldn't have made it as long as he did. Yeah, I mean. For him to carry those teams, he used to carry those Broncos teams in the in the late 80s. He used to carry those Broncos teams, you know, and he was always just outmatched in his games because that's who he'd have to see Jim Kelly with the with the Bills. He'd have to see Joe Montana, you know. He'd have to see guys like that, and he just didn't have the help. And it wasn't until he got towards the end, to, at the end of his career, when he got Terrell Davis, that's when he really was but able. The to. thing is, but the thing is, is even when he had to wait towards the end of his career, he was still doing it at the beginning of his career. The guy was carrying them and winning games. Yeah, and, you know, had they actually got him the help that he needed, or at least a little bit of that help that he needed. Can you imagine how many Super Bowls that team would have had? Yeah, I mean, he just I, – I just think he's highly underrated. A lot of people don't give him the, the props that I feel like he should get, and I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm a, I'm a big John Elway fan. Everybody knows that. Uh, there was a debate if John Elway was better than Brett Favre, and to me, I was just – to me, it's not even close. It's not even close. So I'm going with, um, I'm going with uh, John Elway with you there too. And Chuck Thomas says Brady winning the six did it and the way coming back 28 to three. Uh, yeah, but it helps when you know what damn plays they're going to be called. Your opponent's going to be playing. Yeah, let's Ooh. talk about the asterisks next to some of those Super Bowls that Brady's got. That's my opinion. But anyway, go ahead. I'll let you read some more comments. <laughs> wow. 
And then Sharon says, no, Chuck, Brady will never be the GOAT. And Ron says, we talking Super Bowl. We talking Super Bowl ring. No, just the eye, you're, just the eye test. When you see, and I just thought Elway was mobile. He was a baseball player. He had, he had an awesome arm. He was mobile. He was accurate. And I, I look, I respect what Brady's done. I just think that Brady played in an era, in a very soft era. I really do believe that. Uh, to me, eras matter. And I know, I know Brady and I know Brady and um, um, Manning played in the same era. But I just always felt like Tom had better teams around him. I, I, I I know Brady has more Super Bowls than Peyton, but I just thought Peyton was a generational player too. He just he didn't have the help around him that Brady that Brady did. Oh, so, you know what? I, I've heard this and I've I've heard this and heard this about Peyton Manning, and I'm gonna tell you something. There's one Manning who didn't have a whole lot of help around him throughout his whole career. He didn't have an offensive line when he first came into the NFL, but you know, if he hadn't threw such a bitch fit and not wanted to go play out on the West Coast and, you know, uh, actually went, played as a charger at the point in time. But then they made that switch after the picks. Each team, you know, the Giants took uh, Rivers and and uh, Chargers took Manning and then they switched their picks, you know. Yeah. But I give credit where credit's due. I know a lot of people do not give Eli Manning credit, but I'm going to tell you something. I do not think Eli Manning was always the problem in the in the New York era. Okay, he wasn't. To me, he is the he's I if I if I was playing football, I would take Eli Manning on my football team over Peyton Manning. Oh wow. I I never thought Eli Manning had the talent that you say he didn't have a you say he didn't have an offensive line, but you know what he did have? He had one of the best damn defensive lines of all time. They yeah, had that, Tom Brady running for his damn that, line. His like, defense, I don't know if I've ever his defense is not sacking him and killing him. Other teams teams' defenses were absolutely beat. I mean, this guy had I don't know how many concussions he had that first season. I no, mean, I'm, I'm saying though, you, you're saying he eventually got a good offensive line in, 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 um, well, yeah, but it took about three years. years. But there, okay, but Peyton Manning got beat up his first, his rookie season. I was like, man, y'all need to, if y'all don't get this man some protection, he is not going to have a long career. I was looking at like, uh, uh it made me wince like uh, what happened to uh, da David Carr in Houston. I mean, this guy was getting hammered every play. You need to go back. You need to go back and watch Eli Manning's first year and look at the hits that that kid took and got up and still was able to throw the football down the field. Yeah. I don't know how he did it. I don't know how Eli did it. So I, I'm sorry. I just I, I think I, I would take you away over Peyton. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and I think this is the last one here. This is the last one. Uh, we got one before, more. We got one more before the 2020 NFL season starts. Which head coach could you see not returning to their team? This this season, and to me, this is just so easy. I I don't think it requires a whole bunch of, uh, I don't think it requires a whole bunch of debate. I, I'll answer this really fast, Bill O'Brien. And from what I saw last night, that doesn't change. Bill O'Brien with with Doug Marone and Jacksonville a close second. It, and to me, it's not even close. And I could also see Adam Gase, Adam Gase down there in the bottom Adam. left hand side. I could. Gase ain't going nowhere. I'm going to tell you something. Gase ain't going nowhere. Let me tell you why. He has something on Roger Goodell, and he's got something on the the Jets franchise. Uh, there's some kind of dirt that he's got, and they're afraid to fire this guy. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just don't know how Gase is still in the NFL, in my opinion. Yeah, I, don't need, I don't either. But to me, 
I don't know who it'll be, but the person that it should be, it should be Bill O'Brien. Bill O'Brien should have been fired last year. Yeah, he should have yeah. been fired last year after after that crap. Uh, and after getting rid of DeAndre Hopkins, he yeah. should have been fired on the spot. He should have been just get get your stuff and get out of the, just get out of town. And from what I saw last night in that game last night, it nothing. It it just confirmed what I already thought. I just thought that Deshaun Watson just deserves so much better. How could you do that to him? You're just putting your franchise quarterback out there, just hanging him out to dry. I think so too. I agree with you on that list. Absolutely. Uh, I do not like Bill O'Brien. And last but not least, the young the uh, I don't almost the, these guys here. I think this one here is pretty easy. Um, oh, Ethan said, "Don't forget Matt Nagy." Matt Nagy, I could, I could, I could definitely see that. But uh, last last subject of the night. Uh, Start, bench, cut, Carson Wentz, Matthew Stafford, Dak Prescott. And for me, this is pretty easy. I don't trust Carson Wentz. He's he's injury prone. He's made out of paper mache. He's softer than McDonald's ice cream. I, I don't trust him. I just some at some point during the season, he's gonna he's gonna miss four or five games. He's softer than Charmin tissue. So I'm going start start Dak. Bench Stafford and cut Carson Wentz. Well, damn. <laughs> softer than McDonald's ice cream. He's softer than McDonald's when they when they have ice cream. If they have ice cream, because most of the time they don't have ice cream. Um. Okay, I, I I'm gonna say start that bench Matthew. And cut Carson. Wentz. Wentz. I'm but telling you right now, we all already know Carson Wentz hurts by the fifth, sixth game of the season. It's 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 bound to happen. He's just it, 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 he can't. The dude just can't stay healthy. And to me, uh, if you can't stay healthy, unfortunately. Uh, Tito, I'm gonna get you back for that. I'm, I, I got stuck with Carson Wentz on one of my fantasy football teams because he just <laughs> decided he wanted to go and get Dak. Just when I was about to draft Dak, he goes and picks him up just to just to get at me. And you're still gonna lose. But anyways, uh, Ramona, any last any last thoughts? I will read some of these comments because some of them are quite comical. <laughs> Sharon says. No, you bench Carson because you want him to come off the bench well rested. <laughs> right. <laughs> I love that one. That was a great one. Oh, comic really there. Thank you, Sharon. We needed that. Uh, Don says take Mike Tomlin off that list. He shouldn't have been on there to begin with. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, uh, Yes, I went nuts whenever I seen that. Yeah, she thought, damn it, Marcus, where the hell you get this slot from? There's no way. <laughs> there is no way. Um, Bruce will retire if he wins the Super Bowl. Byron Leftwich will be your next Tampa Bay Buccaneers coach. And I'm going to tell you something right now. I loved Byron Leftwich. Loved him. I loved him. But I don't know. I don't know if they'll make that leap that quickly. How, how long has he been there? Um, He's a, uh, not really sure. he's a. I think he's an offensive coordinator in Tampa Bay with with Arians. Well, yeah, and it's where he's saying he thinks Bruce Arians, if they could get to the Super Bowl and win it, Arians would retire, um, and Leftwich would be the next head coach. I I think Leftwich could be could really help a guy like uh, Josh uh, Josh Rosen. He's going to need a guy like that that can. He's going to need a guy like that that can mentor him, and I and I hope I, I I just hate I just hate to see what's happened to this kid. I I really feel like he didn't get an opportunity. So hopefully, being on Tampa Bay's practice squad, he gets an opportunity to kind of sit and watch, uh, sit and watch Brady and and really, you know, just sit, dude, just sit back, relax, learn. You're going to get your opportunity. You know, you're going to get your your opportunity. I, I think he needs to get a little bit stronger, get in the weight room, 
because he to me he just kind of he's kind of frail like the way Sam Bradford was. And I maybe that TB12 method going up in there and you know eating avocado ice cream, maybe that'll help him out. Put some Sharon meat on says, it. Sharon says to start Dak, bench Carson, and cut Stafford. Okay. Uh, Okay. Ethan says start Wentz, sit Dak, cut Stafford because of the age. Start Wentz. And I could see, I could see cutting Stafford because of his age and especially the injury he's coming off of. Uh, yeah. I don't Sharon's trust like, him. Sharon's like, no, you bitch Carson because you want him. Oh, I didn't read that one. That was my comic release. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, com uh, Cowboys had. Bad season, Dak sign, signs with Colts. <laughs> uh, they they already have their quarterback though. They drafted they drafted a <laughs> they they drafted a quarterback already. Uh, the high the first Dalton, Dalton says start Dak bench went injury prone and cut Stafford age. Uh, and Sharon said, "Isn't Stafford injury prone too?" Really not. I mean, he's played with a really lousy team. When really he lousy. when he first came into the league, he was injury prone. But I, I I think he played like seven eight years and didn't miss a game. Yeah. I, part of it was because they 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 couldn't run the ball. He was out there throwing the ball the the whole time, you know. So hopefully he comes back healthy this year. I I think that the two comeback players of the year candidates, the two top comeback player of the year candidates this year, will be. Uh, Ben Roethlisberger and Matthew Stafford. Those are my two early picks for comeback player of the year. Cool. So um, that's that's everything, guys. Uh, welcome back to football, Ramona. You got any last words? Uh, no, just glad to. I mean, wow. You know, I'm looking forward to Sunday. I'm not gonna lie about that, but looking more forward to Monday night. Uh, <laughs> No doubt. Yeah. Uh, prime time night. On, and Ben's back on prime time. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Uh, yeah I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to the Sunday night game. So, uh, guys, make sure that y'all are, uh, we're going to get those uh, Atlanta Falcons cleats up in the uh, on there to people who want those ticket uh, tickets for that and the opportunity to win those. And what we're trying to do is make it where the, uh, the draw, the, the the winners are announced staggered so I'm, I'm shooting for like in the next two weeks for the to have the the uh winner presented for the uh buffalo bills and then every week after that i want to announce a winner so we're working hard to get this side up uh get in there we're going to get these atlanta falcons up in there the link where you can get the tickets for those and uh and we got more stuff coming make sure you go to the rise up uh tea shop get you um, we got the long sleeve t-shirts now and hoodies if you want that. 20 25 for the short sleeve t-shirts, 35 for the the uh long sleeve t-shirts and 45 for the hoodies. Get get those in so I can get those printed up for you and get it to you. And um enjoy oh, the game. I, I do have one last thing to say. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. 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 I almost messed up. Thank you, you Ethan. Love you. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna mention, we gotta mention like the best fullback to ever play the game, Rocky Blyer. Rocky Blyer, I gotta tip right to you on that one, Ethan. Thank you. <laughs> she nearly got oh, sued. I was, about to have my, I was about to have my lawyer get her for, for breach of contract, <laughs> not living up to her contractual obligations. Y'all enjoy the, the games this week. I gotta get out of here and take care of these dogs real quick. Y'all have a great one. Make sure y'all are getting those tickets, getting your T-shirts and hoodies and stuff, and be safe out there and enjoy the, the games. Uh, and tune in to all the rest of the Rise Up shows uh, throughout the week. And we will see you next week. Y'all have a great one, and, and uh, take care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye. Good night, guys. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>